And so it sounds like FireEye thought they that that they had been breached, and in, in yep. finding out where the breach was, found a bigger issue. Yes, and that that's a great way to summarize it right there because you know it, in a way it's fortunate that a cybersecurity firm got hit. So uh, FireEye detected that uh, unauthorized individuals had gained access to their network and had gained access to some of their red teaming tools they used to test and secure client networks. Um, they did the responsible thing, so they, they immediately disclosed what happened, so they, they let the public know. Uh, they also did something I thought was really cool, which is they took hashes of all of the red team tools and sent them to every antivirus vendor so nice. that the antivirus vendors could immediately list them in their definition updates so the tools would be blocked from use pretty much everywhere. Uh, so that was a really cool thing for them to do. They, they handled it great. Uh, but as they started digging into it, you know, being a cybersecurity firm, being somebody who deals with this every day, they knew exactly what to do. They started digging into it, and they figured out the vector that the attackers were able to use to get into the network. And once they figured out that vector, they traced it back and found out that this attack was way bigger than just them. So this was not targeted on Microsoft 365. This was not targeted on FireEye. In fact, the vector was SolarWinds. So SolarWinds is a company that makes network monitoring software. I've used them at literally every company I've worked at. Uh, I, I think it's a great product, the SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor. It uh, You can quickly deploy it and monitor bandwidth and uptime and network health, server health, all sorts of really cool things in a simple web UI. So it's a, it's a great tool a lot of us use. Well, the attackers, which have been traced back to, I believe it's the Cozy Bear Group in Russia, you know, it's always something bear, uh, <laughs> that they were able to compromise SolarWinds deployment servers. And they were able to back a, or basically build an, a, a malware or a backdoor of sorts into an update that was hosted from the SolarWinds servers that then pushed out to over 18,000 wow. clients. And this is software designed to monitor your critical infrastructure, your servers, switches, routers, firewalls, and companies trust this software. And over 18,000 companies deployed this update. That means the attackers gained access to a ton of stuff, including the U.S. Treasury, NASA, and FireEye. This is the biggest attack of the year, maybe the decade. So we found this out because of FireEye. Do we have any indication of how long they were uh, they were in SolarWinds before uh, this was discovered? So they uh, they actually did put out a little timeline. The update that contained the malware was released between uh, it says it was available between March 2020 and June 2020. So that that's like that's three months. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but it just shows like here's software that you trust, and you apply an update, and it's already got. A, an exploit baked into it. And in this case, it was a nation state actor. And Daniel, you can probably speak better to this. Like, these are some really talented people, right? Well, <coughs> excuse me. The fact that they were like burning zero days to get into these systems shows the level of sophistication that they had, and which is what's pointing to them being APT. And FireEye monitors APT activity. They're always um, kind of updating the communities about what APTs are up to, which new ones have been discovered, and things of that nature to help the security community understand where they need to you know, like build fences yeah. against what APTs they need to worry about. So the fact that they were like this, this article goes to say about how they were using techniques that they'd never seen before. A, it shows that no matter how big you are, it's just a matter of time if, if somebody with the right resources decides to target you. B, you never know what you're using, that your security may be amazing, but you you basically bolt on a piece of, of unsecure software or hardware or something, and you're building in a door for them to slide through and gain access to it, and how far this gets to reach out because of the, them finding a zero-day vulnerability on a SolarWinds software. It's a very, like you were saying, super popular, so it was highly likely that they were going to get some high value targets out of this. So it was smart for them to go after that. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that we see at that state level. So, I mean, it, it's amazing to see. It's always like, wow, man, these are, these are some smart individuals that come together and, and do these things. So you kind of, 
admire that on one hand, and then you go, but they're real a holes. <laughs> <laughs> I try and envision what it's like for these people, and we have no real idea. We we don't no. know where these people necessarily are. We're being told that it's the Russians, but we don't actually know that. But I was thinking, like, imagine Daniel, Peter, put put yourself in their shoes. You're you're working in your war room, you know, and oh man, you just found a way into Solar Winds Network, right? And you realize the scope of that. Like companies that have limitless security budgets will set up out of band network management, uh, you know, a, a special network just for their management tools. You just gained access to that for all of these customers. Like Daniel, you mentioned holding zero days, right? Yeah. So they probably say, "Oh my God, I just got to <laughs> break out break, break, where the it says you know, yeah. break glass in case of fire." Like this is it. Yeah. Break out those zero days. We're using them all. Yeah, we're about <laughs> to burn it down. There, there's literally no better target. This is the the this best. Is, this <laughs> is yes, the the unicorn that you're looking for. Yeah, this I, is the chance to get my family out of the gulag. Yeah. <laughs> they probably went nuts and broke out every tool and and rolled out every stop right. because they. They knew once they were in those networks, they could get even more, get right. even better, and, and just go crazy. Yeah, it was a fire sale. It, this was probably Christmas. Well, I was about to say Christmas in July. It's, it's, <laughs> it's December, so it's <laughs> Christmas. Oh, but we know this was earlier. This yeah, was months yeah. ago. Oh, it's Christmas in May. Oh, uh, I, I yeah. should mention, oh. if if you are running SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor, uh, if you're running SolarWinds Orion, you should have updated anyway because that's ancient. Uh, but if you're running Network Performance Monitor uh, and you did an update between March and June, which you should have, then that means you are vulnerable. And so... So you need to make sure you're updating. Uh, if you have stolen SolarWinds software, which I do oh, know some yeah. people do, that's a bad you idea. Get what you got coming. <laughs> and yes, that that is exactly what's going to happen. So definitely make sure you've patched and updated. There you go. Karma. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.